going on all my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Peter Jackson reviews, in today's video I'm taking a look at his 1995 made-for-TV documentary, Forgotten Silver. So Forgotten Silver was released in 1995. This was a made-for-TV documentary that aired on New Zealand television networks back in 1995. I debated on whether to include this film or not, but seeing as though this film is included on a lot of people's uh, list of filmographies of, for Peter Jackson, I did decide to include Forgotten Silver in there. I decided in future director series going forward, made for TV films will count along with documentaries. I know I excluded the Scorsese ones. I do need to check out some of those Scorsese documentaries, but yep, I will include Forgotten Silver. Also because he's only made like 15 films and the project won't take forever. Like with Scorsese, if I had included all the many documentaries he did, Mixed with all the feature films he's directed, that would be a massive project. I am including Forgotten Silver, and that means I'm also including his recent documentary, They Shall Not Grow Old. We'll get to that one in the near future. So, Forgotten Silver. What's it about? This is a more obscure film from Peter Jackson. Not too many people's talked about it. Not too many people have seen it. Is it any good? Let's find out together. So Forgotten Silver, which is a documentary, explores the life story of Colin McKenzie, a forgotten pioneer of international cinema who was born in rural New Zealand in 1888. Forgotten Silver is a very interesting film. I was quite fascinated by this story. I had never heard of Colin McKenzie. I thought Colin McKenzie story was quite interesting. It's crazy how much accomplishments this guy did in cinema that nobody has even heard of until 1995 when Peter Jackson unearthed this raw footage. He found a bunch of Colin McKenzie's movies in an old shed and his dedication to make, making sure his name is up there with among the other pioneers in early cinema. I mean, if you look in the movie, you'll find out that Colin McKenzie created the first tracking shot in a film. He was riding a bike and he was, and you see uh, him filming while the camera's moving on a bike and you got, he, had, he created a sound film long before uh, the jazz singer over in Hollywood two decades later. He created the first color film, which is crazy. He created the first feature film before what D.W. Griffith accomplished in Birth of a Nation. It's crazy that nobody talks about Colin McKenzie. He's just been kind of thrown under the rug. He even made a very ambitious project learning about this biblical epic he made called Salome and how it's like the longest development film in history. He developed the idea in 1914. He had, the project was stalled because of World War I. And then when he finally decided to make the film, he decided to make it bigger, more ambitious. He built like this giant set of Jerusalem in the jungle somewhere, hired a bunch of extras, and then he had problems with the weather. He had problems with the heat. He had problems with money, the Great Depression happened, and then he had the battle between the movie he wanted to make while also having to appease uh, the Soviets who were trying to fund the film as well. There was a lot of crazy stuff on that, and then a personal tragedy happened just as he's finishing the film, which made him very depressed and not wanting to release the film at all ended up burying the film and was forgotten about until Peter Jackson found the discovered footage at the old set and the film ended up being restored and released in 1995 and the movie looks incredible. If the movie was released at the time 
I think it'd be ranked among the most finest silent movie epics of all time. Definitely be a lot better than Birth of a Nation. I've seen Birth of a Nation. The racism in that film really uh, takes me out of the film. But Salome looks like an incredible epic that definitely deserves its place among the finest features of all time. The movie also brings up an interesting comedian named Stan the Man, whom Colin teamed up with, helped make some of his comedies to help fund for his Salome project. Stan the Man was this infamous comedian in New Zealand who did a lot of crazy physical slapstick comedy where the joke was he wouldn't hurt himself, but he would hurt others. That joke started when a little girl walks on the set to pester the comedian and Stan smacks the little girl in the face and that was what caused people to laugh in his movies. People thought Stan was unfunny but they liked Stan smacking and harming others and that was the joke. These Stan the Man films are amazing and I honestly think they're funnier than some of Charlie Chaplin's films. I love me some Charlie Chaplin but you gotta give Stan the Man the credit he deserves. This man was a crazy genius. And I loved his comedy film watching the clips that we saw. The one where he unintentionally hit the uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand and then he gets the crap beat out of the, the New Zealand police is honestly the funniest thing I've ever seen. And <laughs> that ended up being his biggest hit apparently. Oh man, this is a crazy movie. This movie is only under an hour long but yet the whole movie is so fascinating, it's so gripping. The movie definitely keeps you invested in what's going on. There's a lot of eye-opening details, like apparently Colin McKenzie shot footage of a man flying a plane and succeeded just months before what you hear about in the history books with the Wright brothers here in the US. And that's just crazy hearing about stuff like that. This is one good movie. I like the documentary style. He got a lot of uh, legit people involved talking about the praises of Colin McKenzie. Leonard Malton is on here. Sam Neill of Jurassic Park fame talks about the life story. A little awkward talking about it, but Harvey Weinstein is also in here. A little awkward nowadays, but he was still a big figurehead in 1995. and. He talks about Colin McKenzie. It's all a fascinating film, and I personally enjoyed it. And I was just so fascinated and blown away that this story with Colin McKenzie was forgotten about. Yet, Peter Jackson and crew decided to unearth the truth and discover a hidden figure in film history. Wait, what is that you say? This movie was a hoax? Colin McKenzie was not real? No Colin McKenzie? No Stan the Man? This was just one giant troll to the audience? <laughs> I love this movie even more now. No joke, when I saw this movie, I was honestly thought this was a real story. And then when I did my research, come to find out that this whole story was a complete hoax, Peter Jackson just made it as straight as possible to try to fool his audience that this was a real story and made like this ultimate troll comedy out of it. I thought was just downright hilarious. And the fact that he got Leonard Malton and Harvey Weinstein and Sam Neill in the straightest voices possible to make you believe that this story was real, I thought made the film all the more hilarious in retrospect. Uh, Peter Jackson, even though I know him better for movies like Lord of the Rings and King Kong, He's a gifted comedy genius. I wasn't as crazy on Meet the Feebles, but, but you definitely get to see a good dark sense of humor that he did so well at, with Brain Dead and now with Forgotten Silver. And I think that's what makes the movie such a genius concept. 
And I, like I said, I love this movie all the more now that I know the story is fake. It's a brilliant comedy film mixed in a mockumentary style. It's a movie that, even though it is hard to find, you can watch it on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the description below where you can watch the video for yourself. It's a crazy little movie, and the more I think about Forgotten Silver, the more I love it even more. I actually think it's the best Peter Jackson film I've seen of his early films so far. That's saying something because I really dug Heavenly Creatures. But Forgotten Silver is an interesting movie within itself and more people need to talk about it. So definitely check out Forgotten Silver for yourself. I actually think the movie's funnier knowing that the whole story was fake because you'll get into the jokes a lot more and how ridiculous the story is once you realize the story is fake. So definitely check out Forgotten Silver. I love the film. It's actually one of the best Peter Jackson films I've seen, honestly. Yeah, you can make fun of how silly the story gets. I know some people are upset that Harvey Weinstein is in the film, what I've seen some of the few reviews on Letterboxd, but the movie itself is pretty good. I love the story. It's ridiculously entertaining. It gets funnier the more I think about it. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna give Forgotten Silver a four and a half out of five stars. And on the 100 point scale, it's getting an 86 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of Forgotten Silver as part of my Peter Jackson director series where I'm reviewing his complete filmography from his directing debut to his most recent film. I hope you enjoyed this video. Oh, and I'll leave a link in the description below for a playlist where you can check out all the other Peter Jackson reviews I've done in this series so far. At the time of this video, I've only reviewed some of his earliest films, his early low budget films like Brain Dead, Meet the Feebles, Bad Taste, along with heavenly creatures. I got a lot more Peter Jackson reviews to cover, especially his bigger films once he made the transition from New Zealand to Hollywood. This was the last New Zealand film he made, Forgotten Silver. We're starting to get into the really big ambitious projects coming up, so be on the lookout for more Peter Jackson reviews to come. If you need to catch up on my past videos, don't forget to check the link in the description below for my playlist. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and notification bell so you can be notified of future Peter Jackson reviews. Join me next time in this series where I'll be taking a look at Peter Jackson's first Hollywood production, the 1996 horror film, The Frighteners. Definitely be on the lookout for that review coming very, very soon. But if you've seen Forgotten Silver, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!